Wow. Five plays, 83 yards in a minute, 57 seconds on fourth and seven from the Platte Valley 34 on a slant. Kukas hits Shea Hansen, and he goes into the end zone. It was a one-and-one situation, or one-on-one, I should say. Jacob Fector to kick it off. Chase Maxey, and he squibs that ball, and it's still bouncing it around the 18-yard line, picked up by Maxey, gives it over to Zender, running left side across the 30, and he's tripped up by, might have been uh, Kyle Muir, and it was at around the 36 or 37-yard line with 3.05 to go in the second. And the bead diggers off to a 21-0 lead. Dave, I'm sure even some bead digger fans have to be stunned that it's a 21-point lead against a team that gave up a total of seven points in seven games in Patriot League play. You know, I, th- I think so, except for the fact that everybody, you know, in beat digger land knows that we were playing without all our aces the first time we played them. Jordan Smith in a shotgun. First and 10 for Platte Valley at their own 36-yard line. And Smith to hand it off the float, running left along the sideline. Breaks a tackle from Rosenbrock, and he's still loose, but he's down, going out of bounds at around the 40, maybe to the 41. You know, the thing with Rosenbrock, even if he doesn't make the play, he slows down the offensive player enough to allow his teammates to make the play. And, yeah, it could have been a one- or two-yard gain. It does go for five to the 41, second and five. I'm telling you, though, I, I guarantee you Rosenbrock's upset because he's had Float in his, right in his grip, but he hasn't been able to hold on to him. Float's just so powerful that he's, he's tough to hold on to. Second down and five from the 41-yard line. Platte Valley on their own side of the field. The Bee Diggers have not committed a turnover. Platte Valley's made three. Smith in a shotgun. Smith will keep the football. Run up the middle to the 45. He runs into a Bee Digger first down. Kyle Hefner made the tackle, but not before he gets to the 48-yard line pick, and picks up seven yards on the play. Like a good neighbor, State Farm agent Greg Mullen is there. Let Greg Mullen work with you to get the discounts you desire and the coverage you need. State Farm agent Greg Mullen. You know, I'll tell you what, the, it's funny to see a, you know another quarterback this week, or it's normal to see another quarterback this week running straight up the middle on the diggers. That's something this defense has, has gotten pretty used to in the last six or seven weeks. In a shotgun once again, first and ten for the 48. Smith on the option right will pitch it to float. He's got nowhere to run. He fumbles the football, and it's loose. And I think the beat diggers might have gotten it, or did Platte Valley get it back at the 46? Well, I think they got a huge break. Float was stripped. But it was taken away at the 46 of Brush by Trent Farenbrook. There were two or three bead diggers there. Instead, it turns out to be a six-yard advance for Platte Valley. Second and four inside a minute 55 to go in the second. You got that right. That was real lucky because it was just because diggers' feet were sliding as they were trying to stop and fall on the football. Smith and a shotgun, handoff, first down, back towards the middle to the 35-yard line, and down at the 31, and a big gainer there for Derek Nybauer. The gain is 15 yards, and Platte Valley's in a no-huddle offense. Now, I think they got the Diggers maybe a little bit complacent right now. Hopefully the Diggers are going to settle down and not let them back in the football game. Really need to go into the halftime shed, three touchdowns up. First and 10, Platte Valley at the B-Digger 31-yard line. Smith in the shotgun will keep the football himself to the 30-yard line. He's down at the 29, a gain of only one, and Darren Wilt made an excellent play. Kyle Hefner also in on the hit, second down and eight. Platte Valley will huddle, and let me tell you, they can't afford to huddle too much because there's a minute and nine to go. They should have two timeouts remaining. And when the ball is snapped, they'll have under a minute to go before halftime. Receiver split each side. Second down and eight from the beat digger 29-yard line. Jordan Smith in a shotgun is going to keep the football himself. Now he'll pitch it left side to Valadez, who is down after a one-yard gain. Tanner Morrow made the tackle in the open field with 45 seconds to go. Platte Valley calls a timeout. It'll be a third down situation as the football is placed at the 28-yard line. And thank goodness for Morrow's play because... There wasn't too much out there defensively for Brush in terms of personnel. It well, it was a whale of a play there by Morrow because he had a fight off a block. You know, he wasn't the guy that was getting optioned. He was getting blocked, and Jordan Smith pitched the ball at the last minute. Morrow fought it off and just made a, a ace tackle. 
So for the Bee Diggers defensively, Platte Valley will have a third down and seven from the 28-yard line with 45 seconds to go. For great family entertainment, check out Fire Lanes at 220 Cambridge and Brush. Walk in or reserve your time at Fire Lanes today. And speaking of fire, that Bee Digger offense has really been on fire on those third and fourth down situations. That's what's amazing. It's not like they're scoring or, you know, just going first down, second down. They've had to do a lot of damage on third and even fourth down. Yeah, and big yardage, and they're doing it with fullbacks running right up the middle. Third and seven for Platte Valley at the B Digger 28. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, two setbacks. Smith in a shotgun, awaiting the snap, has got it. Quarterback draw, runs to his left. Rosenbrock can't get him. However, he is taken down. Along the far sideline by Tanner Morrow at around the 25. That would give him two yards on the play. Make it three. So we're looking at fourth and four. The mark to make is the 21. And a good job of Smith going out of bounds. Because the clock stops with 39 seconds to go. On fourth and four from the beat digger. 25 yard line Smith once again in a shotgun awaiting the snap has the football hands it off to Ballard as right side first down inside the 20 he's running strong inside the 15 and it's a gain of close to 12 to the 13 and on fourth and four Platte Valley picks up the first down no both teams doing the damage we just talked about running with big guys in between the tackles for first downs the football at the 13-yard line. Clock running, 30 seconds to go in the opening half. Smith in a shotgun, throwing out to the left. That pass is complete and out of bounds. Caught along the far sideline by Jordan Dunn inside the 10 to around the 8. See, that should be a pickup of 5 on the play. And it is. You know, if Plot Valley does score before the break, Dave, it's not the end of the world. You'd love to see the B-Diggers with a three-touchdown lead. Bottom line is that this offense does have some explosiveness to it. Second down and five from the eight-yard line with 23 seconds to go before the break. And the clock is going to be reset to 28 seconds, so that gives Platte Valley even further time. At the brush eight-yard line. You know, you just like to not give Platte Valley any kind of momentum going into halftime or any hope. You want them to go in there hanging their heads, trying to figure out what's going on. Well, they've at least been able to respond on this possession. And Platte Valley does receive the second-half kickoff. Clock has been reset to 28 seconds. Second and five from the eight-yard line. Under center is Smith this time. And Smith... Rolling to his right. Wants to run with a football. Has a seam to the outside. A flag is down. And Kukas drags him out of bounds at around the five or six yard line. But that's got to be coming back, I would think. Yeah, hopefully it's a hold. I'll tell you what, I'm glad Kukas didn't get a hold of him there because he was reaching up for the back of his shoulder pads and could have been a horse collar tackle. The indication is holding against Platte Valley. With 22 seconds to go, Platte Valley is still going to be in the red zone, but it will be closer to the 15-yard line instead of, the obviously, the 5. Let's see where the penalty was committed. They'll walk it off, obviously, from the spot. Looks like it's going to be from the 8-yard line. So we're looking at, at the 18. Second and goal for Platte Valley with 22 seconds to go at the 18-yard line. So they're going to need a big play to get into the end zone. See if they hand it to Float right here and let him run it. That's what they've been doing. Yeah, Platte Valley should have one more timeout remaining, according to my calculations. Receivers out to the left and right. The ball has been reset. Smith is in a shotgun with a back right next to him. Float is off to his right. Nybauer to his left, taking off with the football of Smith, and he's got a yard, that's it. Running to his left, Kyle Hefner dragged him down along with Derek Lynch, and Platte Valley calls their final timeout after a gain of one to the 17 with 15 seconds to go, and now if Brush would allow a touchdown, that would be a backbreaker considering the position you've got Platte Valley in. 
That's for sure. You know, I got to talk about Hefner on that play. He didn't just drag him down. He stepped up in there. Platte Valley faked the handoff, and then they just tried to run that quarterback keeper up the middle, and Hefner flew up there. He got his shoulder pad right in Jordan Smith's belly, kept driving his feet, and put him on his back. We always thank Terry Clough for updating us on the season series. The Beat Diggers 22-3 and against Platte Valley. However, they have lost two of the last three meetings. Both were in Kersey, including one this year. And you can bet that the Beat Diggers are atoning for that. 1993 was the only other time besides 07 and 09 that Platte Valley defeated Brush. That was a 21-19 game. Not sure exactly where that game was played, but there could be a possibility that in this series, Platte Valley's never won in Brush. So third down. And I believe I said it was goal, but it's not goal. It'll be third down and 13 at the 17. So it was not second and goal at the 18. At that point, it was second and 15. Now it's third and 14 from the 17. Smith in a shotgun formation, awaiting the snap. Two-step drop. Pumps looking to throw off his back foot towards the end zone. A man is out there, but it's incomplete. Overthrown for Caleb Caddy, who did have a step. And check that. That was Adam Hange who threw that football. And I don't know if Jordan Smith was hurt. Boy, it looked like Smith the way he took that. But, Dave, what do we know? Uh, Jordan Smith, it looked like he left the game after he ran the football with a, some sort of a hand injury. And then they, they went ahead and let Haynes throw that football. But now Smith's back in the game. So we'll see what we'll see what they do. All right, this will be a field goal attempt. Alex Teckler with Jordan Smith holding a 35-yarder with nine seconds to go off the right hash mark. There's the snap. The kick is up. Uh, that's not going to reach. That's going to be well short. No good. The kick is short, and with four seconds to go, the Beat Diggers dodge the bullet, and all they've got to do is take a knee and a 21-point lead into halftime. You know, I guess they figured, Dave, that Teckler will be able to make that field goal, obviously, from that distance, but I would say... That was a good five or six yards short when you consider the trajectory wasn't there either. Oh, easily. Yeah, just, you know, the, it didn't have the height. Even if it would have had five more yards, it wouldn't have had the height to go over the go over the goal post. But you got to give Platte Valley credit. You know, they were trying to put some points on the board, and obviously they have they were kind of giving up on their offense. They're not really ready to, to run the ball or, or uh, throw the football. And I have to believe that has something to do with uh, Jordan Smith's injury. Uh, one of the coaches up here um, looked like he kind of indicated that Smith might have hurt his hand, could be like like a broken bone in his hand or something. The Beat Diggers may have played their best half of the season. We are at the break with the score. Brush 21, Platte Valley nothing. You're listening to the 2009 Class 2A quarterfinals on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com.